Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Preston, and this is a typical podcast. You might be able to tell things are a little different this episode. Uh, I'm using a different microphone. I didn't have. I, I'm up at my cabin for the week. We came up here for Easter. Instead of recording on the couch that I'm normally at, or yeah, the couch, I am on top of a bunk bed. I'm on the second story of the bunk bed. <laughs> And speaking of bunk beds, I have never had a bunk bed growing up. Never really had to, never, never had the need for one. I never shared a room with someone. Uh, and, you know, the, the sucky thing is I missed out on all those regular bunk bed adventures. Those bunk bed shenanigans that you would have with like a sibling or a friend. Um, I have been, I have actually... I have been to a friend's house and he had a bunk bed and for some reason we slept on the same level when the top one was completely empty. But anyway, uh, yeah, bunk beds and stories, bunk bed stories. I feel like just classic bunk bed memories. I just, I don't have like, for example, you know, someone's on the top, top bunk and the person below doesn't know there's someone above. So they're just maybe on the phone talking shit about whoever's on the top and they're listening in, they're eavesdropping and then they jump down and whoosh, punch him in the face, you know, classic bunk bed stuff like that. Or maybe even, you know, the person who's on the top, uh, pees the bed and then it like leaks through and then like, it's like raining for the bottom bunk, you know, classic bunk bed memories like that. I've never... Guys, I've never, obviously I've never had bunk bed memories, so I don't know what, what they're like. So maybe I'm just making them up, but that's, I think that's kind of accurate. I, th I could see that being what happens. Or, um, has ever, has someone ever, <laughs> you know what would be kind of funny? What if, uh, what if the person who created, uh, the bunk bed, what if it was, what if, what if it wasn't someone who you know, it's used as, you know, siblings or, yeah, it's used mainly for like siblings, you know, who, of the same age. So that way they can share a room. But what if it was an adult man who created it so that way he and his wife could sleep in the same room, but not on the same bed? And maybe he had a thing for elevation. So he's like, I really like being on top. Or maybe, maybe the wife did. Maybe the wife was like, honey, I can't sleep in the same bed with you because we're on the same level. This is not, this isn't romantic, this isn't romantic, this isn't, this isn't what I want in life. So then he sets out on a mission, on a quest to find the greatest carpenter, greatest woodsmith, the greatest mechanics and engineers of that time. And he creates what's known as the bunk bunk. Turns out that that's the prototype name. He eventually recoins it for bunk bed. But that's but let's get back to the main story here is he creates it for his wife so that way the wife could sleep above him and he sleeps below and then they're happy. True story. Based on a true story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's what if that was the reason why bunk beds were created? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know my bunk bed history. Maybe it could that. What if that is the reality? What if that actually is the reason? Uh, man. Yeah. Anyway, bunk beds. <laughs> I kind of want to talk a lot more about bunk beds, but I won't, I won't go too crazy about it. I will say there's some crazy looking bunk beds. There's some really cool ones. Like I never had a reason or like a need for one because I was pretty comfortable sleeping on one level. And even still, you know, if you wanted your bed elevated, you just pop that up and then you're just, you sleep amongst the trees. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some crazy bunk beds. There's like, st there's full on elevator. There's ones that have elevators. There's ones with like, you know, just regular ladders. There's some that have like the really skinny, like shitty 
ladder that you have to climb, those, those ones suck. Those ones suck. Those aren't good. They're not good at all. Basically, my whole family's here, so this bunk bed room, it's kind of, it's a cool room, but this, I've been sleeping uh, in the bunk bed. And if you're wondering if I slept on the top or bottom, bottom, or or switched, you know, like in the middle of the night, go from one to the other, uh, I didn't do that because I'm not crazy. I don't, I could just stick on one level. I don't have to like flip flop in the middle of the night. But I, I, I was at the bottom. I was at the bottom. I feel like there's no need to go to the top personally, unless, you know, there's another person. Then, then maybe I'm like, yeah, I'll go top bunk. Oh my God. Yeah, I just remember, you know where else I've slept in a bunk bed besides like a friend's house or like now technically I, 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 at one of my own houses, I have a bunk bed, but I, uh, at science camp, just a bunch of elementary school kids. We were all, we all had bunk beds. I think I was the bottom. I think I was at the bottom bunk as well for that. Sorry, I just had a pleasant memory about bunk beds. I didn't think I had any bunk bed stories, but I did. All right, let's move on. Let's move on from, from this. I've, how many times have I said the word bunk bed? I think I've said it a little a little too many times uh, in, in such a certain amount of time. So let's move on to tree houses. <laughs> They're bunk beds, but in trees. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I always want. I did actually always want a treehouse. Turns out they're actually really dangerous, and they they break all the time. I didn't know that, but that didn't stop my dreams. I never accomplished that. I never. I never got a treehouse. Never got it. Never had it. But that's okay. Because I'm still alive. Because the treehouse didn't break. You know, like in movies, you always see like, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know what kind of movies I have in mind. But, you know, every now and then you see a treehouse in a movie and you're like, as a kid, you're like, that's pretty fucking cool. That's pretty cool. And then, um, you know, there's always, and sometimes there's like, they built, their, you show them building the treehouse in the movie. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. That's kind of, That's actually really cool. But now that I think about it, what do you do in a treehouse? What is there to do? I mean, there's probably some really cool treehouses, but the like, you know, I'm sure the treehouse I would have gotten or would have been around is probably just like a square, but just a square, maybe one window. And then maybe there would be a table up there. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad I'm, I'm. Yeah, I don't need a treehouse anymore. I, I've uh, debunked it. Any of you know about pole vaulting? How did that originate? I, I want to know the origin of pole vaulting. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a track and field event where someone runs with a long pole and then they stick it into the ground against something and then they get the momentum, they get lifted up and they prop themselves up and over and they finesse gravity and they get over the a, a limbo stick and they get over it <laughs> i think they're playing limbo wrong you're supposed to go under it and just like not get hit but they're going over it and like above it uh <laughs> no but that's pretty it's, i've always thought that was so cool and impressive but i want to know how did that like come to be i feel like it was a militaristic thing in the past like hey let's see how many athletic fit young guys we can get uh we're gonna use this stick we're gonna stick it into the ground we're gonna and then the stick will pull us off the ground and then we hop over their fence hop over any castle wall yeah and then now now we're raiding them this is and then we take their land through pole vaulting that's gotta be that's gotta be how it how it came to be. It's gotta be a military a military talk tactic. Um <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wanna know pull pull vaulting, man. Pull vaulting. It's so 
it's pretty, I think it's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> but, who was like, who was like, hey guys, watch this. And they just pick up a stick and just whoosh, just whoosh over, over a limbo stick. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's my favorite. Uh, I mean, I don't watch, I don't watch any like sports or anything like that. But I think it's impr- That's that's. I think it's my favorite track and field uh, event, for sure. <laughs> it's just so. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> if anyone, this is a message. If anyone shits on pole vaulting. <laughs> fuck you you don't understand you don't understand you're <laughs> literally whatever you care about it's not important you're not you, you don't you don't matter anymore because pole vaulting is where it's at that's that's a that's a feat of strength agility and prowess <laughs> Bro, i'm saying I don't know. Is it the mountain air where I'm like, yeah, let's. I'm gonna start using uh, more impressive and uh, grammatically correct words and phrases to, to sound smarter. It it might be just the oxygen is more up here, so then I consume it, and then I uh, I blow it out, and then the brain powers. See, this sounds more like something I'd say, rather than trying to pass off as if I say. Prowl, prowl, prowess, prow, prowess. See, I don't even. I don't, I don't even. <laughs> prowl, prowess. Hold on, let me, let me make sure. Prowl, is it prowess or prowless? Fuck, it's it's prowess, and I was saying prowless. Hold on, is that something? Shit, no, it's not. This is what happens if you don't check someone's, if you don't, you know, if you have someone, you know, that, uh, says a bunch of big words every now and then, and, and they sound like they go in and you're like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's just an act. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely not like, not everyone. Look at me. I'm I said prowess. And for a moment, for a moment, half of you thought it was impre- thought Half of you didn't even question it. You're just like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That's a good. That's a good descriptive word. It's not even a word. It's prowess, prowess, prow. Anyway, let's talk about deja vu. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, it's. I'm pretty sure it's when uh, basically you're in a moment, maybe you're around people or, or something. You're in a moment and then you have this this out of mind, out of body experience where you're like perceiving everything, but you're like, I've already experienced this. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much what it is. Basically, you have an out of body experience. You're like, you're looking into like you're seeing everything as if you've already seen it before. And then boom, it's gone. Um, I I have those all the time, and sometimes you know you won't try to change things or try to mess around with it, play around with the reality, if you will. But I think it's starting to mess with me back because uh, j- literally just today I was <laughs> I was sitting on the couch and you know everyone everything was happening, I was in the moment, and then I was like something's missing. And I feel like that's what I always have. I always have, there's something missing or there's something that's about to happen, but then I change something where it doesn't happen anymore. That's the feeling I get. Uh, I'll have another story about it too. But uh, so for this one, I don't know why, but I was certain, I was certain Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi was supposed to be sitting to the left of me. I'm not making this up. Like literally everything was happening. Everything was the exact same. And I was like, in my mind, I was experiencing this and I was like, okay, 
that happened, this happened, this happened. And I was just in the moment looking at these things happening because I'm like, I know these are happening. And in my mind, something was missing. And I remembered that Ewan, Mc, Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, was to the left of me. So in an alternate universe, I guess I'm friends with him. But not in this one. Or m maybe he was supposed to be here, but, you know, on his drive, he he hit some traffic. So there, there goes that chance in that reality. There goes my opportunity to hang out with Ewan McGregor. And I think I'm saying his name right. I hope I am. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, another time Deja Vu uh, took something away. I was in, I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly, it was in high school and um, prom was around. It, it was coming up or, you know, it was four months away from prom. And I remember that this girl that I had a crush on was like, in the like everything was happening in the classroom all that and i remember i think i asked her or she was supposed to ask me or something like that something where i'm like hey and she's like hey you know like a, something like that where it's like oh my god yeah <laughs> oh my god wow yeah um however in the reality that didn't happen but I was in my mind, I was like, oh my God, it's happening. This is happening. It's, it's, it's going to happen. So like, how do I make this a reality? And then it didn't, it didn't happen. And I was confused. I, I was angry. No, I wasn't actually angry. I was confused, angry and frustrated. I couldn't understand why. Why was my mind playing these tricks on me? Why would it? Wow. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm messing around. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, there's also another time. Uh, last. This is the last deja vu thing. But <laughs> honestly, it might have been just a dream. <laughs> but I another a similar instance where like I asked someone, I asked the same uh, the girl that I had a crush on, the same one, or she asked me something like that, and in. I thought it was like I was asleep and I was dreaming, but it was so real that I was like, this is deja vu. I'm seeing this in the future because sometimes I do. I like I'm like I see it at a moment, but then I end up forgetting about it because it happens like so many years in the, later or like so much time passes that I forget about it. And then when it happens, I'm like, I just slap myself in the face. But and then it happens and I'm like, wow, I did it. I made it to this moment. Um, but yeah, there was another time where I thought I was, I was dreaming. I was like, this is happening. And then I, I wake up and I was like, I was so happy. I was like, oh, yes, yes, yes. This is real. This is going to happen. I'm remembering it. And maybe, maybe because I remembered it, it didn't happen. So I learned my lesson and um, you know, I tried, I tried changing, I tried changing my fate. I tried to ob obtain a premonition, not a premonition. I tried to obtain a future foresight and it didn't happen because I was so certain that, and remembering it, that I was going to make this a reality and then it didn't happen. And then she went with someone else. Let's talk about holidays because Easter just happened anyone go uh pick some eggs because everyone knows uh with easter you got to go to you pick up eggs that's that's the whole thing easter egg hunts i believe or maybe it's just called egg hunting and you don't add easter to it but anyway you go to uh you go to like a nearby farm you go you you walk into the farmer's chicken coop you see all the chickens and then you steal the eggs so that way you can paint them Sometimes, uh, I mean, the farmer might get mad, but at the same time, maybe when you're going in, there's like a fox or a predator that kills chickens and then you stop that. So then the guy is great. The, the farmer is grateful for you saving its chickens, 
But at the same time, he's like, damn, you're only here to steal the eggs? God. But thank you. And then you you technically it's not stealing anymore because he gives you permission. So then you get the eggs and you paint them. And uh, then you got to go find them. And then you crack open the chicken eggs and there's a yolk. And in the yolk, it gives you a number. And that's how much money you get. So yeah, that's Easter. Easter's pretty cool. Oh, you know what? Actually, the, the chocolate, the, the Easter bunnies that are made out of chocolate, those are actually kind of good. Uh, I always, I, I always, I always eat, bite the ears first. Always. Always. Always bite the ears first. Um, I've never ate a full Easter bunny, chocolate Easter bunny before. It's a little much for me. Um, like there's some that are like 3d, you know, like, like 3d, you know, <laughs> some of them are 3d and I don't, I don't know if I could rock with those ones. Those ones are too much for me. The two, like, I mean, obviously they're all 3d, but <laughs> I'm not going to eat like a paper thin chocolate, but I mean like the ones where there's like an opening in the middle and there's like nothingness, but, uh, I, I enjoy the, the flat ones, the ones that don't have like aren't round and like actually trying to be a bunny the ones that are like more flat those ones are good since i am up at my uh cabin i have been in nature been in the wilderness i hear turkeys every now and then they go gobble gobble um sorry yeah i heard birds and they go you know I hear a crow every now and then it goes Wah! not like that. It's a little deeper pitch, but a little deep pitch, but like higher pitch at the same time, like Wah! like that. But yeah, uh, my podcast is turning into, oh yeah, I've got news. My podcast is, it's now going to turn into where I just recreate animal sounds. That's going to be the, uh, it's going to be the future. Um, I'm going to bank in on that because not, I don't, I don't see I don't know if a lot of people are doing it. I might be the first. And if I'm not the first, I will be the first uh, most successful at it. This is going to be the end of today's episode. Thank you guys for watching or listening. Uh, this was a typical podcast. I'm Preston. And uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Have a gratuitous day. <laughs>